is a child. A six-year-old with no idea how devastating the flood that just destroyed the basement of his home was. But look at the joy radiating from him, proudly showing off that action figure to the camera. Well, here's that same child, 11 years later, at a convention in Texas so he could catch the Godzilla store during its limited time here in the United States. Now, what brought a child to Texas to see a store? Well, the answer is simple, it's passion. And to the surprise of no one, that child is me. When I was 10 years old, I was experimenting with the 3DS, a popular handheld console at the time. I was messing with its camera app, fiddling with the settings, and I found one for something called stop motion. I remember hearing about this, taking one photo after another, and then ultimately stringing them together into a cohesive video. What you're about to see is what that first stop motion project looks like. Nothing fancy, no fancy background, effects, lighting, nothing. Toys on the floor of a 10-year-old's room. Nothing great. Now, to further my creative ability and to explore video creation, with the help of a family friend, I made a YouTube channel at the age of 10. It was named Subatomic Cheese. Now, <laughs> as time went on, I actually found a lot of inspiration from the many greats of the early era on YouTube in the 2010s. As many 10-year-olds do, I tried my hand at plenty of video types, gaming, edits, theories on big movies and games at the time. But above all else, stop motion was what held my attention as a creator. As the years went on, I realized that the, maybe the YouTube channel I made at 10 didn't reflect the quality of work I wanted to do. So I unlisted most of the videos, and I underwent a massive rebrand. Then came SH Monster Artist. This new online alias would be used by me on all of my projects going forward. Beginning small on social media, I began to meet a number of people who were passionate about monster movies, passionate about creating art. It was eye-opening. At the same time, I also started high school, and I began to climb the ladder of the animation course here at LFHS. Now in my second semester as a senior, I'm in Animation 8 Honors, the highest level of the course, and I'm the second ever student to ever do that. Now, the point being that meeting so many passionate artists, students, friends, teachers, everyone, giving critiques on our work, telling what we could make better, time after time, it just pursued me to make this hobby even more of something that I could make my own. And as time went on, I got pretty good at it, or so I like to think. <laughs> You'll see here in this evolution that as time goes on, my projects take on many different forms. You're going to see experimentation with lighting, framing, more fluid movement, different effects, and not even all the time do I animate just giant lizards. There's a monkey in there later. <laughs> Dragon's tooth. But for me as an artist, being able to go back and see projects that I made three years ago, it's funny that you spend hours making something and then you don't even remember that you did it. But all in all, it's just cool to see how this progresses over time. Now, for those of you who don't know, stop motion is an incredibly lengthy process, hence why it's fallen out of the limelight compared to 2D and 3D animation. It's more cost effective to do those alternative forms. Now, me being a one-man show, that means I'm responsible for the lighting, set building, writing, composition, editing, and actually shooting the stop motion itself. For those of you who are unaware, stop motion is shot by taking little figurines or objects, moving them one little frame at a time with every shot, distances so small the naked eye can barely see a difference. And now I'm sure to some of you that sounds pointless. I am an 18-year-old who plays with toys, and here I am delivering a TED Talk. <laughs> well, all of this ties back to that idea of passion, which I mentioned earlier. So many people just go through the motions. They wake up, they go to work, they go to school, they come home, they go to bed, they do it all again the next day, and the next day, and so on. But there's a very simple way to break this cycle. Do something you love. It can be cooking, writing, sports, an instrument, anything. As long as you have something in this life that you can take and make your own, there is something so invigorating and liberating about being able to just take something and have it be yours and yours exclusively. For me, I'm incredibly grateful for all the opportunities my stop motion career has opened up. I'm grateful for the family, friends, teachers, staff, random strangers online who have supported me over the years. It's because of that kindness that I've been able to learn new techniques. I've met a lot of awesome people. I've traveled to the Godzilla store. I've gotten brand recognition from the companies whose products I use. And I've even gotten to meet and talk with the people who made and even starred in the very monster movies that inspired this whole thing. So no matter what it is, do something that you love. For me, I'm sorry to break your hearts, I'm not going to film school. I've had teachers, 
family, friends all recommend it for me, but I'm going to be an electrician's apprentice after graduation because I want to keep my hobby a hobby. But if you can love what you do and turn it into work, even better. So no matter what it is that you're passionate about in this world, hold on to it. Let it move you. Cherish it because you never know what opportunities it can open up. Thank you for listening, everyone. Follow your dreams. <laughs>